I'm Pastor Michael Jarbo. I'm the Senior Associate Pastor at Memorial Drive United Methodist Church in Houston, Texas. Self-care is uh, so important. You're hearing more and more about pastors hurting themselves or struggling in mental health more and more. And so uh, we're hypersensitive to it today. Uh, two things that come to mind. Uh, number one, kind of a taboo subject in, in the world is this idea of going and seeing a counselor or going to a therapist. There is nothing wrong with seeing a, a therapist. I saw uh, a coffee mug one time that said, I love Jesus, but I love my therapist too. And I think those two go hand in hand in, in, the, in the Christian walk. It's important to share uh, openly what's going on in your life. And then the other piece I would add is uh, having a covenant group. A small group of people around your age that are in life stage and ministry that can share those experiences together to know that you're not alone. I know many clergy on our staff have covenant groups and they rely on them in difficult situations. And so my covenant group, five other guys in their, in their 30s, also in ministry, we come together once a month and just kind of share our stuff. And to know that I'm not going through it alone is gigantic. I think that's the number one piece. Uh, I would recommend is, is to self-care is to take that time to acknowledge your own, your own grief and then as a pastor, the grief of others that you carry with you. That community of, of shared work and care for each other is kind of everything. Uh, and so I can't imagine doing this without colleagues. Ideally, when we're at our healthiest, um, we're connecting with colleagues who who feel similar pressures and have similar um, challenges, but also experience, um, you know, the kind of the beauty of ministry and sort of get it. We're not made to do life alone. Like it's a my one of my core theological beliefs is like God made us for community, and so whether life is is really fine, and that is your answer, but it but it is true, and things are just sort of skating along smoothly, or whether you're in crisis or um, you're facing some huge transition, like we really are meant to be in community to handle this. Death and dying and being with people and their own hardships and relationships falling apart or doubts and questions, and, um, and so that's the hardest part too, um, just kind of seeing the brokenness in the world in the faces and in the lives of people that I love and I care for. And so uh, we unfortunately get a, a front row seat to a lot of that, but it's also, um, you know, I know that when I'm there for, for somebody, especially if they're going through death or uh, grief, that I can expect the same thing from the church. Our dependence, and not just on God and not just on our close family, but just general dependence on one another, that humans need each other. And so I think, um, even as hard as it is to face death or to face grief or those difficult parts of our life, it's when we really see clearly how much we need each other. Life is really hard if you try to do it alone. Faith is really hard if you try to do it alone. Um, not saying you can't do it, but it's a whole lot harder. And I'm, I'm just thinking about um, things that I brushed up against personally recently, things that have been in the news. You know, we hear so much about struggles with mental health. Um, and fatalities related to that. And I'm just, I, I think about that so often that folks feel so alone. There is a place for you, there is a community for you, there is a relationship for you. Um, you don't have to feel like you have to be strong enough on your own. None of us are strong enough on our own. We are so much better together. We are so much stronger together. 